Oliver stepped out of Voss's car. He and I took turns hacking Voss's shovel in the mud at the spot we figured would be the buried hatch to the bunker. It was a mound of mud, higher than the rest of the area. It was close to the ventilation system. It seemed like the best guess. Oliver wore Voss's rain poncho and she walked back to wait in the police cruiser. With the car facing us with the headlights on so we could see the mud. The rain and darkness made it slow going and burdensome. Maybe the whole area was about a couple of thousand square feet. For the first 45 minutes, I cursed the rain because it was making it hard to move. That changed when Oliver was dredging along near a low hill and hit something beneath the dirt. Here, I found it. I went over and looked. The adrenaline kicked in for both of us. Oliver shoveled like a madman. He slung the mud and the dirt to the side as fast as he could. Our boots sank into the wet mud. Within moments, I saw what he was yelling about. He hit a metal object under the mud. He shoveled faster and faster. Wet mud slung everywhere. Minutes of intense digging passed. And finally, I saw the metal that the shovel hit. It was a steel padlock. It was new. The muddy metal still glimmered. This must be it. They used this underground bunker to hide their victims. I was horrified at what we might find down there. But I hoped it was a living, breathing, Janey song. Oliver kept shoveling mud out of the way until a square outline was exposed. He stopped shoveling and tossed the shovel aside. We both dropped to our knees in the mud and started wiping the grime and slush off the surface of the square object. It was only seconds until we found an old rusted metal hatch. It nestled neatly into the ground. Voss witnessed our demeanor change, from tired to excited. She saw us drop to our knees, and she jumped out of the cruiser and ran to us through the rain. She asked, You found it? I jumped up and stepped back to her. It looks like it. Shoot the lock. Oliver nodded and handed me the shovel. He said, Back away. Oliver squeezed the trigger and fired twice. The muzzle flash was quick, but bright in the rain and the darkness. The first shot hit the padlock, but didn't break it. Not all the way. The second bullet did the trick. The padlock exploded into several shards of metal. All that was left was the hatch and a long handle. Voss let go of me and started for the hatch door. Oliver said, Wait! She paused. We should clear it first. Voss nodded and drew a gun. I'll get the door, I said. And I stepped forward. I grabbed the door hatch's handle and wrenched it open. It was heavy, like a hatch on a submarine. The door creaked on its ancient hinges. Rain battered all around me. It poured into the darkness beyond the hatch. I pulled the hatch all the way open and dropped it on its handle against the mud. I stepped back. Immediately, a stench wafted out of the hole. It was horrible, like a shipping container filled with dead refugees who failed to survive a secret cross-ocean escape to a better life. The three of us all gagged at the smell. Voss drew her gun and went in first. She took a deep breath to stop herself from smelling the stench. She brandished her flashlight and led the way with it out front. She took it slow. First, she peeked down into the darkness, and then she dove in full throttle. The blackness swallowed her up like the mouth of an underground monster. Oliver covered his nose and mouth with one hand, held his gun out with the other, and followed Voss into the blackness. I waited at the mouth. Down the hatch, I heard nothing but silence. Then a light came on, and the dark tunnel below lit up, bright, and Voss's head came into view. She stepped into the doorway. Her face was ghostly white. There was a look in her eyes like she'd seen a nightmare. Widow! Get down here. Look at this. 